what y'all may not know is all this artwork and stuff. I think this is actually Jason's bedroom. <laughs> right, it is, dude. <laughs> man, that was what I was going to share at the end, man. You're giving it away to do it. But yeah, seriously, man. I got my bed over here and I got my Care Bears. No, just kidding. <laughs> What's up, guys? Brandon here, the first podcast here on a Modified Rides podcast. So I figured we'd start this podcast series off with one of the pros in the, the custom vehicle podcast world. Some of y'all may know him, some of y'all may not. Uh, we have Jason ODB Ballard on today. Uh, he's with our Lifestyle Podcast. If you're anything related or tied in with any of the modified vehicles, mini trucks, trucks, Lincolns, whatever, you know the podcast, you know the name. So what's going on, Jason? Hey, not much, Brandon. Thanks so much for having me on, man. I'm super excited. And I would encourage people subscribe or follow, depending on whatever app you're on, uh, to Brandon's new venture, Modified Rides. We're super stoked for you. We know podcasting's big, but thanks for having us on again. Uh, I figured being the, the initial podcast, why not have a, a podcast pro or a podcast celebrity, however you want to put that. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I appreciate it. And, you know, it was cool. You and I have always stayed in contact over the years. And when you reached out and, and we were just chatting a little bit, it brought back some good memories of the conversations we've had over the years. And I've always thought, you know, there's a few people in my mind that I thought could do a podcast. You know, the relationships you built. Myself, I'll speak for myself. I'm super excited to see who you have on. And uh, thanks again just for the opportunity. Well, I figured I've done the photography stuff. I've done the magazine stuff. I've done the video stuff you know, the podcast seems to be where it's going. So everything in my world revolves around modified vehicles in some form, old, new, lifted, lowered, uh, cars, trucks, bikes, golf carts. It, it really doesn't matter. So it's like to be able to talk to people like you and some of the people I have on my list coming up about modified rides and, you know, not so much about, you know, it's got these wheels and this paint, but more of, you know, how the scene works around these modified sure. rides and how the industry actually, you know, thrives on it oh yeah you know it and i tell you what i've always given you props if the folks look around you know the background you know brandon's office you know and you you see the photos he'll post he'll, i'm sure he'll talk more as he goes you know of his his garage and i see all those plaques and stuff definitely you're no stranger to the custom modified rides especially like all the sema builds you've had and all of the the features you and i joke around sometimes about how many covers you've shot under your belt so, you know, I tip my cap to you, man. You've been doing this a long time. And as, you know, whether it's hip hop or here, you know, I always say, you know, you put the work in and that usually is number four, number one, first and foremost. And you've done that. Well, you know, I, I stay busy with all the, you know, traveling for, for photos and, and, you know, video and all that stuff. And then my own, my own stuff. And like I was joking, is you know, I sit down for a minute and, you know, within two minutes, I'm like, Hey, there's two minutes I have spare. What can I do? Let's do a yes. podcast. Why not? So. Oh yeah, I'm hoping to bring some some pretty good content, and I like to figure kicking it off with you. You know, at least know you've got that you know that radio voice that, that I, I always talk about. You know, you're I am Jason ODB Ballard. You know, yo yo yo, I, yeah. <laughs> now, if everybody st watches this to the end, I'm going to tell you a fun fact that a lot of people don't know, and you may not want me to share it about myself, but I think you'll like it, and it ties into my voice. But stick with Brandon till the end of this episode, and you'll get to hear that. But if you're listening on a podcast app, do Brandon a favor. Go over and Brandon, I'm assuming I don't want to get ahead of myself. These will eventually uh, be on YouTube. And you know how important it is, right, for the video content, for people to stream that to the end. So, oh, yeah. you know, show Brandon some love and make sure you stay till the end. Yeah, we're this this whole podcast venture, we're going to have it on all the, the regular audio podcast platforms. Of course, YouTube. This way here, you get to see... You know, Jason and, you know, his glorious beard here, you know, you get to, <laughs> yeah. you get to see. And what y'all may not know is all this artwork and stuff. I think this is actually Jason's bedroom. <laughs> right. It is, dude. <laughs> man, that was what I was going to share at the end, man. You're giving it away to do it. But yeah, seriously, man, I got my bed over here and I got my Care Bears. No, just kidding. <laughs> so for so y'all that don't, you know, that don't know Jason, uh, if you, if you follow our lifestyle podcast, uh, he's probably one of my favorite truck related podcast out there uh you know he has anything you know a lot of mini truck stuff related stuff a lot of backstories but he also dabbles in you know bmx bikes and and, and hip-hop and 
I say Jason is Mr. Encyclopedia, you know, the ODB <laughs> name. It needs to be Encyclopedia because you can ask him pretty much any fact <laughs> about pop Stop. culture in general. And he could probably have the article that it came out in stashed <laughs> in the garage in, in a bin. So, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, and I appreciate the good word. And that's the cool thing, Brandon. Like, we grew up, you and I, I, I guarantee we'd put money on if we were betting men. We put money on the fact that we grew up just in an amazing era. You know, so many great memories from the 80s and 90s. And that's why I think when you go on Instagram and you see these pages, uh, we had Kurt Crucial on from one time from uh, the 80s life. You know, he's got a great YouTube channel. And, you know, we talk about just you'll see these, you know, people taking a VHS tape. They put it in their VH or VCR or they'll dig through some magazines or whatever. And they bring back this nostalgia we're very fortunate. We grew up in a great era and I don't know, man, you know, I know a lot of people say that about their own generation, but I think the eighties and nineties are pretty damn epic. And of course we made the two thousands epic, you know, each era has its epicness. <laughs> but if we were to step back to the eighties and nineties when we were growing up and think, Hey, we're going to be sitting here, you know, I'm in North Carolina, he's in Florida. We're going to be sitting here all, you know, together. That never would have been a thing, but here we are, you know, 2024. So Yeah, and I think it was, if people look it up, it was January of 84, there was that famous Apple commercial where I think they throw the big hammer and it's like the people and it was like, what is this? And, you know, the new computer was coming out, right? And and you think about like back then, I mean, we were watching Knight Rider with the little, you know, kit, you know, the little, hey, yeah. kit, well, I bet you Brandon and I both have Apple watches, right? And it's like the things we can do. So, yeah, it is weird, you know, the Dick Tracy era from all those years ago, and now we're you know, going on walks and our phones, you know, our watch is telling us if our heart rate's high, like who would have ever thunk it? <laughs> we, we was riding a roller coaster a few weeks ago down at Disney and my sister-in-law <laughs> looks at her watch. She goes, oh, it says it's too loud here for me. So right, I know you. And you're like, yeah, well, we're mini truckers. We just turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Jason also has, let me pull this up here. He also has the Lincoln Attic podcast. So not only is he into the truck stuff, he's massive into the Lincolns. So, and, and like I said, when he brought up the, the January, you know, whatever month that was of the commercial, like some Mr. Encyclopedia, he, he can probably <laughs> bring stuff back from the sixties when he wasn't even alive. So, or were you alive in the sixties? I, I wasn't, but I feel like, I don't think I was born in the wrong decade, but I love the sixties so much. And here's a fun fact. So we were talking about January of 84 a minute ago. In January of 89, if I remember correctly, Gleaming the Cube came out. Now, it's definitely a cult classic. It's definitely not a classic, right? But in Gleaming the Cube, uh, Christian Slater um, is, you know, chasing this guy that supposedly killed his brother. I don't want to give it away. Uh, I think but there's have seen it by now. Right. There's an 89, or excuse me, there's a 65 Black Lincoln Continental Convertible. And because my birthday was on 1123, not in the 60s, okay, we're talking late 70s, that was around the time of the JFK assassination, which was 1122, a 63. So around my birthday, I would always watch these documentaries, and I was intrigued by the car, and then Gleaming the Cube comes out. I was like, what's that big black car? Man, convertible, that's cool. And it just, it like spawned from there. So I'm a lot like you. Like when you mentioned, hey, I got two minutes, what can I do? We're kind of like squirrels, I guess you could say. I don't know if that's good or bad. But we, we're, we're willing to, you know, take our time and go, hey, I want to do something. I want to go down this bunny trail. And that's what you're doing here. And, I, and I'm glad that you are, Brandon. I think that, um, you know, some of the stuff we're talking about is cool stuff. And hopefully the people will enjoy it. Well, the, the, like, so the point of what I want to achieve with the podcast is, to, to get the insights into how, how people's brains work, how the, the industry drives them. So I guess the first question is, you know, who actually are you and, and where are you from and what do you do for a living? Yeah, I appreciate you asking. I'll give you the Reader's Digest. I love, you know, I was in corporate for a long time, so I love kind of the bullet-pointed uh, mindset, right? So basically, I was born in 78. My dad, rest in peace, was born at MacDill Air Force Base. Uh, his dad was in the service. I was born in Tampa, so there's not a lot of born and raised Floridians, believe it or not, because a lot of people are transplants. You know, rest in peace to my pops there. Joe Greaves, which you'll see um, a little bit more, I think, in the industry about Joe. Joe took this photo. Joe's been in this thing a long time. And, you know, growing up in Lando Lakes, I used to say, Lando Lakes, just like the butter, <laughs> but not where the butter's made. You know, who would have ever thunk that, you know, growing up there... We uh, started reading Mini Trucker Magazine, and we started 
you know, we were into BMX bikes, so we were into all that stuff, but we were on the outskirts. We were north of Tampa. And back in the late 70s, when my parents had the foresight to move there, we we got cable somehow. I don't know how, Brandon. We got cable in like 1984, 85, okay? And I was racing home at the end of the day to watch USA Network, to watch G.I. Joe, okay? That's my claim to fame. Same. So, you know, doing all of those things in that era um, is kind of what made me who I am. But going back to your question, another key thing is I worked at Verizon Wireless in the cellular industry for almost 21 years, right out of high school. And I kind of worked my way up and I had an opportunity to leave on good terms. And I went and now I have like a, a job with a local jurisdiction, which I love. And I'm able to work with people. I love talking to people, giving people a good experience in terms of, hey, you know, this is what you need help with. Let's fix your problem and then leave you even, you know, uh, you know, on, on a higher note, if you will. So luckily now, I think I put the work in over the years. I, I, I can, I don't know. I, I look at it and say, I've got a lot of flexibility to be able to go to shows and things like that. Uh, we get a lot of holidays off. So that's who I am. Verizon. Right. right. And I understand exactly. that because my wife's been at Verizon 13 years now. And there's yeah. you know, a lot of shows she don't go. I always joke. And somebody's like, where's your wife at? Why ain't she here? It's like, well, one of us has to have a job to pay the bills. So that's her. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And your wife is an awesome person. I want to give a shout out. You know, my wife always loves talking with her. And, you know, we, we always have a good time with you guys and, uh, you know, it's, you're a good dude. So I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad that Brandon Burrell, Burrell Images is doing the Modified Rides podcast. Uh, so on the podcast note though, when you started our lifestyle, the podcast, many people know it as OLP. Yep. When did you start it and, and what made you want to bring that to the, to the scene? So this is a, this is a very intriguing question. I, being in the tech world. I used to have an Outlook you could set up RSS feeds and they would go out and it would pull in all the articles from these sites and you wouldn't even have to go to the website. It would just like shoot you an email then you could click the link. Yeah. So I had all these RSS feeds set up and I was, you know, every day I was on nine to five back and I was on all these and all of these um, technology sites were creating podcasts and I was, I was intrigued by it because I was listening to them and I was like, this is cool. Like the product just came out yesterday and they're talking about it today and it's produced and it's uploaded and I'm listening to stuff that I enjoy. So I was like, Hmm, what if I could do this for the stuff I like to talk about? So I, I had hatched this plan and it took me like a year and I started thinking about it. I was like, what do I want to do? I got to find, you know, I wanted to have a co-host in, in my situation, long story short, so in February of 2015, wow, has it been that some, long? Yeah, exactly. Some local guys, they had a show that you'll remember, which was called the Best Damn Truck, truck Show. show. Yeah. yeah, Best Damn Truck Show. Shout out to those guys. They had me on February of 2015. And when I left their little studio, I drove out to Brandon, Florida, which isn't that far from here. Um, and no, it no was relation. cool. Right, exactly. No relation to Mr. You know Burrell Images. But it it was cool because I got a chance to see it. And, and in my mind, I knew what I was going to have to do. But I was like, you know what? I, I knew I was going to do it, but I, I got to see it, you know, in the flesh, right? I was like, okay, this is cool. So then it took me like another few months and I got it going. And I think like the big thing is, you know, things have changed now a little bit. You know, we're doing a video podcast, right? And you've got a lot of tools and resources at, at your disposal. And I think like for the last nine years, I'll almost call it eight and a half, nine years, it's been super cool. And to me, I think something you're going to learn, you already have a lot of relationships. You're going to get a chance to talk to people that you might go, man, I never would imagine I'd be on a call with this person, you know? And that's the cool thing. You know, at the end of the day, you may not make any money. You may not get any views, whether you do or don't. You're going to build these relationships and you're going to have... You've already, you've already told me, you've shared with me, you, you have people that go, man, I want to come on your show. And you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. So, you know, tip of the cap to you, man, this is, it's going to be a fun ride. Dude. Just stick with it, Brandon. So, so if you started that because you started your podcast, cause you're, you're into the, the custom vehicles and stuff and the, you know, the mini trucks and you wanted to talk about it. So what actually got you into the custom vehicles? Yes. Yeah, so here's the quick natural progression. So in the eighties, the Nintendo comes out, and when the Nintendo comes out, that was – people forget, and I forget too because it was before my era. Right before the Nintendo came out, there was like that big downturn that the, everybody talks about in the video game industry. 
and I guess it was like after Atari, but there were other systems that came out, whatever. So Nintendo comes out, that boosts the whole industry back up. No, well, I convinced my lie. parents. Don't lie, you probably know the date that the Nintendo <laughs> come out. <laughs> yeah, I got to look at my database for that one. Now. <laughs> I think it was, uh, no, I'm just kidding. So, so get this. What was cool is I I was reading the video game magazines, right? That was like, you know, the elementary school, right? And then when middle school comes around, I'm drawing these trucks, which I suck at drawing, and I, you know, drawing these trucks with like these big drips on them, right? And we would, my parents would go to cash and carry, and I'd go over to the magazine rack. Some call it the newsstand, right? Yep, so right. we'd go over there, exactly. And we, you know, so it, it was a progression from the video game magazines to BMX magazines and, and skateboarding, trans world, all that. Then it was like, okay, I'm getting closer to the age of driving, which back then, I think now you can still get your learner's permit at 15. None of and them. then I was like, yeah, you'd see these trucks and you'd hear the boom, you'd see the paint. And I think what it was, Brandon, what, what really drew me in is like, you know, when you're younger, it's like some people want attention, some people don't. But I was like, man, look at all the attention these guys are getting. Their wheels stick out, their wire wheels, they got all these neons. And it was just cool. So when I would go to Cash and Carry, I would buy the magazines. In 93, I bought my first truck and magazine, which I still have. And in 94, I think is when I got my first mini truck. And it was the one with the Soundstream cover that folds out. Mm -hmm. I think it was September 94. And that, I think, all culminated into like, man, this is, I want to do this, you know? Well, I'm I'm kind of the same, but I, I actually started with Sport Compact Car. I remember they, mm -hmm. back before they become all about all the race and performance, they were basically the mini truck version of, of cars, yep. you know, like I was big into the Hondas. I had, oh, yeah. you know, you'd flip through sport compact car and you'd have the Doug, Doug Starbucks paint jobs. You'd have the, you know, the shaved door handles and, you know, the, all the custom tweed and tear and everything. It's like all my friends had the, the mini trucks, but yep. I, I had a Honda and I, I fell in love with that. So where most people started on the truck side, I started on the car side, but then when the car magazines started going to the race and performance, I could care less about how fast it goes and all that, like make it look good. Yeah. So then I started following the, the truck side of things. Yeah. Let's not forget. Like I had some close friends and we'd go to shows, Nopi 99 and 2000. We went September of both of those years. I took a bunch of photos of your CRX that you had. It had a bunch of tweed, and like, even though some of that nostalgia or some of that stuff went away, the nostalgia's back, right? And that stuff, like if that car were to come out on a show today, people would be taking photos of it. And that's the cool thing about the scene that we're in. If you think about too, like I, I kind of glossed over one other publication I want to mention, which was Auto Sound and Security. Yep. Like when you were younger, and I don't know if younger people today, are, are, you know, some probably are, but you you would look at these like who doesn't want to pull up like at high school the kid that picks up my son for high school you can hear the bass right and i go and i'm like it gives brings a smile to my face like you know who didn't want to go to high school and maybe have a system that people were like man that sounds good or man listen to the bass right but auto sound and security to your point you know in some of those builds where the trunk was super clean and you mm -hmm. had all the wires and the amps and all that all of that stuff i think like culminated into what you call like modified rides like we we take a car and and you kind of want a little attention, even if it's like when you open the trunk and someone goes, man, that's clean. You know, hey, that's why we do it. You know, we we put the time and effort because we want the. I know if there's one word that Brandon Burrell loves, it's detail. Mm -hmm. This guy is detailed. I, you know what I'm saying? I, I try to bring all the the little details into stuff. And to me, it's the the bolts no one notices or the oh that brackets chrome. I didn't realize that wasn't chrome factory. Like that kind of thing is always always uh, drawn my attention i guess you'd say oh yeah yeah if brandon's gonna have to do an episode one time he's, he's not gonna want me to say this but he needs to do an episode one day from his garage and i tell you what what's so neat is to see some of the plaques you got all of your polish all perfectly you know you're like hey smell this one i'm like whoa whoa no no it smells good okay yeah it does but that's the cool thing and my buddy paul was here last night we've been going to shows uh since 96 he has built every system that I've ever had. And this guy is like higher. When Bass Mechanic would stop doing CDs, he was he was emailing with Bass Mechanic, explaining to him frequencies and all this stuff, right? He's big into it. And I say all that because Paul builds like really, really high-end stuff. And we were talking about it. And I don't mean this in a bad way, but like we've been doing this for so long. Like we could go to a show and we kind of look at a lot of stuff and we kind of go, 
yeah, you know, you could tell that's entry level. You know what I mean? My interest may not be as peaked at that entry level stuff, but we were all there. Yep. And I think that's a big thing of where we've gotten to, like to your point with the detail and the level of effort that people put into their rides, their modified rides. That is like, it shows like that's an expression of who you are. Well, I've got a couple uh, kids that live in the neighborhood. I say kids. I mean, one's 16, one's like 18 or 19. Sure, but, sure. You know, I, they'd run around when they were little. You know, I'd see them. They'd always make fun of my truck. So why would you want to lower that? You know, <laughs> you need to do this. You need to do that. Well, both those kids now stop by the house, ask, well, hey, I'm trying to wire this up. How do I do it? And they both have trucks. You know, one of them's got a lifted F-250 with like 26s on it. And, yep. you know, all the all the rock lights. And, hey, who, you know, who can I get to do my my headliner? I really want to do a suede headliner in it. Like that, I guess the, the kids in the neighborhood see that and they, they come by, even though they started making fun of it. And they realize that, wow, this is actually something that's cool. You know, it keeps them out of trouble, keeps them out of drugs. And I, I'll tell both of them, I was like, you would probably be better off in life with drugs. You'd spend less <laughs> money than you will building vehicles. So in the long yeah, run. Just keep it legal. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it, and that's, that's the great thing about modified rides podcast, in my opinion, because you haven't pigeonholed yourself into one thing. Listen, we may go to a show and I know there's, there's terms people make fun of, you know, the lower trucks, the lifted trucks, the road dozers, the this or that. If you really break it down at the end of the day, Okay, one of my favorite sayings at the end of the day, if you look at what we all do, there's a passion for the automotive thing. You know, most of it is internal combustion engines. Let's be honest. You know, there's some hate out there for the EV stuff. You know, whatever. I'm not here to hate on anything. There's some things that I guarantee Brandon and I, if we were betting men, we'd probably go, you know, the Carolina squat type trucks. Or I know he don't, I know Carolinas don't want to own don't that. Don't put right? me in that. Right. But like, you know, you could even talk about like in Florida, there's arguing, you know, who who created the dog? What is a dog? You know, Miami is a Tampa. We're not here to debate that. But what we're here to say is at the end of the day, the modified ride stuff to me, my heart tells me it, it, there's a passion for, it. Mm -hmm. you know, sure, you're going to go to a show and sometimes see stuff again. That's like, you know what, that's more entry level that may not pique your interest. But I certainly don't try to hate on stuff. Imagine people hating on the 40s and 50s when guys started doing low riding. Right. Look at how far low riding's come. You know, you look at the Super Bowl 56 or whatever it was, you yep. know, in LA, and you got the low riders. Uh, I posted an old Impala commercial from like 99, 2000 the other day of low riders hopping. So, you know, you could sit there and go on social media and bash people for what they love. But at the end of the day, this stuff is, th there's not going to be any one person that's going to stop it. Well, it's like, think of the, the low rider aspect. I'm not a huge low rider fan. Like, I'm not going to, like, go out of my way to go to a strictly lowrider show. Sure. But when I walk by one that's done right, I'm going to take the time to look at it because those guys put more, back to the detail thing, they put more detail into those vehicles than probably any scene out there with the, the engraving and the etching and the chrome and the gold and the, you know, 37 layers of different paints. Like, the, the amount of modifying they do to these vehicles is just insane. Like I said, it may not be my my go-to build but the fact that they're into it that's what makes me happy that someone still it's not some rust bucket they're beating around and they've taken the time and their money to build that vehicle modify that vehicle yeah shout out to the big homie eddie gordy up in your neck of the woods right you think about the effort that he puts in it gives me anxiety i've actually i'm like dude Gotta Imagine talk all of the time he's got to take off from work and then he's got to travel and he's got to enclose, he's got to rig. And I mean, it's no different than what a lot of people of us do, but it's like you're setting up a day or two ahead of time, right? At this point, I don't think Eddie even works anymore. I think right. I mean, Eddie's retired, Eddie Gordy, right? <laughs> so, but, but like, think about this at SEMA, I was able to go this past year, even though I wasn't there the whole week, I went in the wheel entire area and I was looking for the Fat Fabs Escalate, the black one, right? J so, J as I was walking back there, there was an Impala. And I stopped and I took a bunch of photos of it. And I was like, dude, this is like smooth floors and just oh, like it was on the right just before the just before the Escalade. Yeah. And yeah. I was just scratching my head and I'm going, dude, I've seen super nice cars, you know, and it's like, you know, some of us look at that and go, man, that's more than I would ever do. Right. But at the same time, you know, there's guys, I'm sure, and ladies in the scene going, man, Eddie Gordy, man, like, you know, this guy is like he's dedicated. But the fact there's no difference. 
you yeah, there's no out. difference. You know what I'm saying? Then, then, then like you go, if you were into fishing and you had like a million fishing lures, like everybody has a dedication level that's different. The fact that you pointed out about that low rider and I knew which low rider you were talking about, like that, that I right was there testing shows, you. I was testing how you. Tight that community is like us that are that, that are this passionate about it, see the same stuff. It's not like we gloss by it because it's not our, our wheelhouse, but we still two different worlds and we still looked at the same vehicle and knew where that vehicle was at. See, I was testing Brandon Burrell because he's the Modified Rides podcast host. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm going to dangle this little carrot out there. And he knew it. So you passed the test, Brandon. But do you remember the wagon that was sitting beside it? The murdered wagon? Yep. That, yes. I took. Guess what? I took photos of that because I found out, I think, afterwards that Fat Fabs worked on it. The gold wheels. Yeah, the green. Was it my, my buddy Ted says, you know, green for the money, gold for the honeys. So. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I like that. It needs to be a sticker. And, and, you know, again, we might look at that and go, you know, that isn't my favorite ride. You know, it, it had that ambiance of like a donk slash this slash that. But that's the cool thing where the automotive world's got to. If you were to like imagine back in the late 90s, if somebody told you, Brandon, I know one of your favorite words, the P word. We're going to keep it clean. We're going to use the patina <laughs> word today. But, like, if you think about Patina, not everybody's sold on that. But you and I know there's a few out there that kind of give us the goosebumps to go, wow, man, that, like, Slam 64, Tony, <laughs> like, he builds super cool stuff. So I say all that because there's so many different genres. And, again, there's some things that I guarantee we're not going to maybe stop and look at because it just isn't our thing. And that's okay. Nobody's going to like everything. I well, think. to me, like the Patina stuff, it's like, okay, you spent all this money. You've got... Two hundred thousand dollars in your motor and your frame and your interior, and it's like, okay, well, you're you're short on paint. Is that why we didn't paint it? But then, like you said, when you bring up Tony's, though, it's a whole different, it's a whole different ball game because of what it is. So there's, even though you don't like a certain aspect of the way someone modified something, you're still gonna see the the work and the time that went into it. So yeah, yeah, and it's so hard if you think about. I want to touch upon the subject real quick of social media. It is so hard. Think about in a day or in a week, how often you go on Facebook and you you see something and you want to comment on it. And you're like, you know what? I'm not going to comment, right? All of these social media pages, they need you to comment. They need that E word, that engagement, right? That's a good thing, especially for the brands that you love, including Modified Rides. But if you think about, there's so many people that can't, I've had to learn this and it took me a while to learn it. I was listening to a hip hop uh, guy that, I, that, I, that I've always listened to and someone asked him, you know, what would it take for someone to come up and say something to your face to provoke you to like knock them out? And the guy was like, you know what? You could pretty much say anything to me because think about it. When someone comes up to you and says something, they want to provoke you. If you have the willpower to go, see you later, dude, I'm going to keep on walking. The same thing in the Lincoln world and some of these things, you'll post a car, I'll post a Lincoln or you'll post something and you got people that hate on it. They can't, they can't see the positive, right? They can't see like, wow, this guy did all this stuff. Like someone might comment on Eddie Gordy stuff and go, why would you do that? This is a waste of time, waste of money, all that stuff. Well, Brad DeBerti's Lincoln, the one he was wanting to do, doing those cardboard templates for the wide body. And yeah. it's like the, the purists are like, oh my God, you ruined the car. Well, us that are the modified guys are like, that's pretty cool. I've never seen a wide body Lincoln. Let's, you know, yeah. let's go with it. Well, and think about this really quick. I don't want to give away some of Brad's secrets, and this isn't exactly – I haven't talked to uh, Brad about this, but look, you and I have been in this enough. He took a convertible, which for that year there were about 3,000 made, and all he did was make a cardboard template. I think his plan was – my dad bought the convertible. I don't even know if his dad was ever going to do it to the convertible. They led us along that they were. They cut the cardboard. They had everybody freaked out, and then what do they do, Brandon? a little bit of a ruse they go you know what we're looking for a sedan okay yep. now they may have changed midstream no problem but if you think about the build-up or you think about tv shows you and i both know a lot of tv shows it's entertainment there's a storyline okay none of this stuff is usually off the cuff that's the key that the diverties are doing you know they were able to say hey here's what we're going to do and they get everybody in a roar and then they go oh well, we're going to do this you know so I, I tell people take stuff with a grain of salt you know what i mean 
uh, I'm, hopefully I'll be able to have Brad on, you know, I, you know, done some photos and stuff for him and, you know, super, super good dude. They, they like to play quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, I'm get them away from play and maybe I can get them on for a little bit. So yeah. And, and real quick, I want to give a huge shout out to somebody, you know, Josh Ellis, he was the one that linked me up with Mr. Doug DeBerti years ago. And that's how, you know, we got Doug on our OLP podcast. And for those that don't know, Doug, I know this is going to blow some people's mind. Doug owned trends. That was his company. He talks about how he sold it. And then like, you think about his son, like, Brandon, you know this. You see those toolboxes and that stuff that they're engineering, like they're in a league of their own. You know, when you think of self-made, I think a lot of people have described to me Doug DeBerti is a self-made guy. Like he could do whatever he wants to do. And I give people like that kudos. He's got more drive and determination than I do in a lot of ways. But, dude, I'm not going to hate on that. I go, dude, it's because of him probably is why i love phantom grills man thanks doug <laughs> well it's like the the dualies or whatever they do with the beds that fold up like still that's a modified ride whether it's a show vehicle whether it's a yes. race vehicle whatever they've still modified a vehicle to fit certain needs so yep. you know there's like so there's there's nothing to pigeonhole into one genre everything's everything's on the table at this point. So, you know, if there's people that are listening to this, that are watching this on YouTube and, and want to have a certain person on, let me know, let's get them on. If they're into the modified aspect of vehicles and are building stuff or building parts for people or have built some crazy stuff in their life, just let me know. We'll, we'll get them on. Yeah. And last comment I have on that is if you think about modified rides and you think about years ago, remember when it became really big to like the mini truckers, they raised the entire bed floor, no cutout, all bed lined. That's the way my ramp and, Right, exactly. Super clean, right? Then you had guys that were cutting in like these little compartments and then they were throwing ice in there. And then they would have a little, you know, peacock or whatever it is, pepcock or whatever, you know, and you pop it and you could drain. Well, look, who would have ever thought 20 years ago that like you had this awesome ram that had probably every feature? You'd start seeing these Rams and even the avalanches had it. They had the little compartments that you could put a key in and lock and, you know, you could, they had coolers and Ridge for the longest time in the, in the bed. Yeah. A longest time, you know, people say you can't reinvent the wheel. And I would argue and say, yeah, the wheel has been the ca- If the cavemen get the credit for the wheel right back in that era or the Egyptians, you know, right. Whoever it was, the wheel has been reinvented. The wheel is still being reinvented three piece wheels and all this stuff. Right. But I look at it and say, I, I do think the big three and some of the other OEMs, they pull a lot from the custom world. Absolutely. How many people buy a brand new vehicle now and even change the head unit? They don't a lot because a lot of times, as you know, Brandon, these cars have such nice sound systems in it or they have these cool features. So it's come a long way and I'm just happy to you know be a part of it. Well, if you look at the stuff that we did back in the, you know, mid 90s early 90s late 90s whatever we were adding remote starts to vehicles they're coming factory now we were adding you know roll down windows yeah power you know you're not having to roll the window down like i added those to my crx it didn't have power windows well now every vehicle even my base stripped down maverick has has power windows in it you know we were putting you know accent lighting in the vehicles well now these vehicles are coming with accent lightings we're putting the subwoofers now these vehicles are coming with subwoofers so a lot of what we did trend wise back in the day for modifying vehicles are a factory option. I mean, granted the vehicles are worth 10 times more than what they were back. Sure. Then. You can't buy them for what I wish I could still find a $3,000 Honda. That would be awesome. I, I know. But the stuff hey, I love that did, Ram you had the stuff we did modifying vehicles is now, I guess the OEM people are taking, you know, taking notice to it and be like, Hey, these people are taking our vehicles and adding this. Why don't we include it and just charge them more? Yep. Well, and it's no different than if you think about like, you know, Patreon became really big and I encourage you and other people like get your Patreon set up, you know, people, if they appreciate what you're doing, they'll throw you a couple bucks. Right. But Patreon got so big, you know, you have to have YouTube. That's like, well, why do we have all of our famous YouTube people promoting another site? Why can't we get a piece of that? Or why can't we just integrate it in? So then they roll out thanks. Right. And the super thanks and stuff. And you'll, you know, once you get to monetization, you'll be able to do some of that and not everybody's going to give and that's fine. But I just say that because you have companies that are going, huh, why can't we integrate that? And, and, and to your point, it's not just the automotive. You know, it, it could be in YouTube or technology. Real quick, I wanted to ask for your opinion on this. Speaking of this topic, GM, they announced last year, late last year, that they're going to not support CarPlay anymore. 
I've seen that. I'm, and I'm like, so here's the thing. Like, you and I both know how big PR, press release stuff is, right? And having a PR firm. The thing that boggled my mind, and I've hit upon this on the podcast, how do you come out with a statement and say, well, it's because of safety. Because if somebody has their phone plugged we in. We all have like, our phones running through CarPlay for our maps, our audio, our, you know. We're not watching right, Netflix I, driving that well. Some of us may watch Netflix driving on the road, but. Right. I don't know anybody that would do that, but, um, but, but if you think about that decision, I mean, it's kind of crazy. Now you could argue, we're not going to talk about, you know, Tesla and stuff today. You know, I got the ride in the Tesla recently and it's cool. It's got this big screen. It reminds me of, you know, cranberry. I it, mean, it's, it, it's neat. The interiors are neat in them and it doesn't have car play. Right. But what we've seen from these OEMs, whether it's the Ford sync or what GM has had, their stuff, you and I both know, it's not as cool or refined as what Apple and maybe even Tesla are doing. So it'll be curious to see if the consumers push back enough. And go. And you know this. My dad used to say, people vote with their wallet. Mm-hmm. If someone rolls something out or someone does something at your company that you don't like, and then all of a sudden the revenue's down, we've seen that with a couple of big companies recently, right? Especially in the beer world, right? Yep. They do things that people don't like. Well, guess what? When it starts hitting the bottom line, we'll have to see. Will people really boycott GM and go, I don't want to buy one of these now? Or will the aftermarket come out with something to say, hey, no worries. You just plug this little USB thing in and everything works. We'll have to see. But that's the cool thing on modified rides, Brandon. You can cover all that. Well, there's like like my my 23 Ford Maverick that I've got. Uh, they'll probably be more about this you know, in the future, but working on it a little bit modifying some of it. Of course, I can't have anything, you know, not modified, but like sure. it has wired car play. Well, everything else I've got is wireless. So wireless. You a little USB, little dongle, plug it in. Now it's, now it's wireless. So, Boom. yep. So, so to your point, going back to like the days of us coming up, like you're like, the first thing you did was rip out your head unit and you're like, yep. well, I'm going to put new door speakers, right? So it'll, it'll be interesting. I know a lot of people on the tech sites, their first reaction is, I'm, boy, I'm, I'll never buy one again. I'm thinking, okay, well, hold on. Were you even going to buy one? <laughs> and number two, let's see if the aftermarket steps up. You know, it could be a resurgence of some of the Alpines of the world going, hey, we've got this little magic stick. Mm-hmm. Boom, you plug it in, and now everything's good. We'll have to see. Well, it's like my, my Sierra, the Project Stockish. Uh, you know, it's got the big built in, you know, across the dash is all the big screen and everything. Well, I, you know, I have a pretty good size audio system in it, but we still keep the factory screen. So were these companies like Alpine and Kenwood and all that, you know, where they used to have head units you replaced. Now they're all coming out with the, the DSP stuff where you connect to your factory wiring to still use your factory head unit. But 20 years ago, they would have never thought that was a thing. Yeah, you know, that was you're gonna we're gonna replace your head unit. Now they're probably selling very few head units unless people are buying old vehicles. Yep. You know, so they're they're having to step up to times and and make the make the switch to what what's out there. Yeah, my buddy was here last night, Paul, who I mentioned, and he he's into the NBS trucks and he he owns a couple really cool Tahoes. You know, not overly modified, but he's got all the bells and whistles. He's added aftermarket for the most part. And one of the things that this the guy did before him is he had Macintosh amps. He had this sensuous sounds here, build this awesome box, right? So Paul, it was like, I don't need any of this, right? So he sells it all. He had a guy drive from the Carolinas. He joined a Macintosh group. Guy drove all the way down here to buy one of the amps for $725 or something. It's crazy that like the old, like you'll see this all the time, old school car audio, that hashtag itself. There are so many people that are ingrained in that. And sometimes it makes me wonder, you know, could the OEMs or could could the Alpines of the world have a resurgence of going, you know what, we're going to make a a, a 12 disc CD changer for guys like me that love the physical media. But oh, by the way, it's going to have Bluetooth built in so you can hook your phone up or whatever, right? We'll have to see if the old school stuff in the modified rides world, if it will continue to push the limits, we'll have to see. Well, I shoot a lot of stuff for a, a local client for Mecham Auction, a lot of vehicles. I never know if I'm going to have a, a Model A or if I'm going to have a, a Rolls Royce Cullinan. Like, I never know what I'm going to shoot. But it's like a lot of these vehicles, you'll pop the trunk and be like, wow, there's a factory 12 disc changer in the back. You know, <laughs> like even a Mercedes like, or whatever. There's an ashtray in the back of the front seat. And it's like, you know, now like people would probably take that out and build some kind of filler panel, but to open, you know, open a, a hatch of an old Camaro or something, there'd be a, 
there'd be a 12 disc changer tucked in there. It's like my daughter would probably look at it and be like, what is that? Be like, <laughs> that was where you didn't have to carry your book of CDs everywhere. You just throw right, it all in mean, there. What do you, what do you mean? You don't have Spotify or Apple music? <laughs> well, I, I well, did have a, uh, one of the vehicles I wanted to give my daughter when she turned 16. Uh, it, it, it become a kind of a, a joke with it. And it was like, well, it, it don't even have an aux cord. And it's like, mm, yeah, but you know, it, it didn't need it back then. She's like, well, you know, I can't, I can't drive something if I can't plug my, my phone into it. Yeah. But I don't think these kids today could get around town without, without GPS. Yeah, I know it's, it is kind of crazy when we'd go to show fest back in the day, we'd have an Atlas and we're like, well, which way should we take? And like, we, you know, we'd be coming home a pretty far run and we're like, well, if we cut through here, we could do this. And we're like, God, man. Thank well, God we don't have to deal with that anymore. Then it goes to MapQuest, and then you lose page four of your of your printout <laughs> of where you're going. And you the get ink, lost in some Brandon, the ink cartridge was low. That's all it was. <laughs> and you get lost on some back road or get <laughs> off the wrong exit to get gas. You're like, I don't know where I'm going now. You know, then then you had the the Garmin GPS still or the TomTom that you'd set up on your dash or suction cup to your windshield. It's like now we carry everything we need in our phone. Like that's yep. Yeah, it is. It is kind of insane. But the uh, the the fact that, you know, you can take the stuff from back in the day that we modified with. So it's now in vehicles in 10 years. What are we going to be modifying that's in a, in 20 years are going to be in, in factory vehicles like where, you know, where's that that train going to go? Right. And I, I was trying to think of this earlier when we were talking about old school terms. You'll you'll know this term. You may have had one. I never did. Two words. Low jack. OK. When we were a lot younger, I remember hearing people, oh, he's got a low jack on his motorcycle. And it was like this, you know, there's a satellite that tracks this and whatever. Now, this isn't an AirPod right here, or these are AirPods, but I have a few of the Apple um, AirTags. AirTags, thank you. Yeah. And and what's funny enough, since I put one on my keys, I have never misplaced my keys because <laughs> now I just think about it, right? But, you know, who would have thought years ago you would have to have a low jack it, and some people still have the GPS stuff where you pay a yearly fee, but now you take an air tag and Apple goes, Hey, because there's so many gazillions of iPads and iPhones, we're going to build this little thing that you can put pretty much anywhere. It doesn't use any of anybody's data, but it does ping off every phone and you can find out exactly where it is in the world. It's like, like it's crazy. When I bought my wife's uh, Tahoe, the basic Betty Tahoe we're building for SEMA this year, uh, they were like, oh, yeah, for this price, you know, but there's a, you know, a thousand dollar upgrade. We're adding LoJack and blah, blah. I'm like, LoJack. I'm like, wait a minute. Doesn't this thing have OnStar? Like, why are you <laughs> charging me a thousand dollars to double up on, on where we're going to track it? And I'm like, nah, not interested. So You're like, like, I'm the host of Modified Rides, <laughs> damn it. I'm the last person you should be trying to upsell. <laughs> I was like, can, can we not take that off? Like, I don't want LoJack on it. And it's, right. it, it's one of those, you know, they're, they can't sell you know, the upgraded audio and all this stuff now, or, you know, With now they're having to package. sell low jacks and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah, that's kind of crazy. Now, uh, thinking of stuff that's being built and, and modified over the years, when it comes to you, to you, I'd say your biggest accomplishment would be your bada bing. Yep. You know, I guess it's just now starting to come back out in the world are you bringing it yep. out to shows this year or are you going to keep it tucked in for another 10 years and what is bada bing oh yeah so bada bing brandon may show a photo but bada bing is a 94 s10 i bought right out of high school it was my commuter vehicle to community college i always wanted a truck and I, as i alluded i started reading about trucks like in about 93 so 30 years I drove the truck and it started out, Joe Greaves took this photo and it started out with just commuting, right? And then it was static dropped. And then my friend Matt Torgerson airbagged it. Then Matt body dropped it. Then Matt started to stock floor body drop it. Matt moved to the Carolinas and I kind of went a different path. I was like, well, someone's closer. Jimmy at Jimmy's Running Customs built what you see. This is the original when I first got it. You should Those put wheels. wheels back on it. I know. And look, it has a North Carolina plate, uh, not an NC plate. And that was uh, that was a lot to do with, you know, loving Michael Jordan growing up. He was a Tar Heel, of course, as you know. But the the S10 culminated and it was finished in 2012, debuted at Showfest, had a lot of success. It was shot for a magazine, wins many truck of the year. Very thankful to Jimmy's Running Customs and everybody that accomplished that build. It, I mean, I did some. But certainly, I, it would have never got done without Jimmy and Shane. There's the chassis locally. Um, 
So what, you know, what made you, when you, you said, so this picture of the chassis was, and for those that's on audio podcast, I've got a picture of the, the frame setting up. I guess this is what, uh, Slamfest? Yes. Yep. What year was that? This was 2009. So what made you want to go that far? Because that seems like that's almost ahead of its time for a, a mini truck to be built this caliber. Yeah, thanks for asking, Brandon. I think if you look back in the in the history books, right, the trucking and stuff, there was a truck, KRZ Customs and IF Customs. I really give them a lot of credit for pushing forward the, the whole, quote, stock floor body drop. That term, I th- you know, you could argue who created it. I think IF possibly, but KRZ was right there. KRZ built a... 94 blue s10 with a peach chassis and this thing was super cool it didn't have rear brakes in that photo you saw there's no if for those that were watching on youtube there's no rear brakes it was it was a a culmination of krz and what if was doing but it was also if you look back in trucking there was a feature of a blue new body school chevy that came out and they shot the chassis in a studio now this is before even barsha was doing his no compromise dually which it got shot in ran in street trucks yeah. as a full feature, right? As just the chassis, which is next level. So really it, it, a lot of it was just pushing the limits. A lot of my buddies and I would always joke around like, Oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do hover suspension. We're, you know, and some of it was just like uh, in jest and, you know, kidding around and stuff, but we kept saying, well, what if we powder coat the frame? What if we Chrome everything? What if we make this billet? And if we do all that, that's where we end up. Now, here's something that people don't know. This photo was taken October 10th of 2003, just over 20 years ago. When, before Matt Torgerson moved and he was doing the stock floor body drop, the truck was going to be a spike truck. Now, this was before any other truck was a, quote, spike truck. So this was and before this is, Eric and Little Shop's truck was the spike truck. Which you shot twice for Street Trucks cover. Yeah. Congrats. And, and it wasn't that I was trying to coin the truck the spike truck at that time being in Severed all these years. I had this crazy idea and I was going to call the truck severed you, which was going to be like severing the competition, you know? And it was like, you know, we're going to have a guillotine. We're going to have all this. We're going to kill the competition. And this was the original rendering that Robbie, um, he just recently had a full write up in a magazine. Uh, This is the original rendering that Robbie did. It was severed you. The only thing that didn't get done, if you look at the back window of this, okay, Jimmy knows this. Oh, I'm a huge roll down back window person, okay? I love the C.R. Lawrence, you know, Tundra ran it, yada, yada, yada. We were going to do a roll down back window. And after we did everything, Jimmy was like, look, man, we could do it. But he goes, the way this S10 is, and if you guys have done it since in the S10, and I just said, you know what? I'm not going to do it, but a you'll lot, see also the Toyota the guys were doing that because they were running forerunner back windows and stuff. Right. Well, right. I'm not a exactly. lot, of that, but a few of them. Yep. Yep. So, you know, the, it was just the culmination. Um, I had a lot of success. I took a little bit of time off. I had some challenges with the engine that I caused. My friend Tony's dad rebuilt it. Jimmy and uh, Tim, they did a huge punch list a couple years ago. They redid the spider injector, the fuel pump, fixed a couple relays, you know, just stuff that, that was like a little cobwebs i guess you'd call it right for those y'all watching on on youtube though you'll you'll probably see that this is <laughs> this is probably when jason messed the engine up yeah exactly that is definitely when i missed the engine up pretty pretty full it's, beard it's a, it's a photo of him working on it yeah and then um i i remember you know thinking to myself hey you know the truck's finally done and i did drive it some and then i had the engine hiccup I brought it back out a couple years ago, right before our friend, unfortunately, rest in peace, Greg Miller. We took it to scrape in that year. And, you know, I took a little bit of a break. I'm actually, um, after we finish recording, I'm going to be working on it. Now, Brandon loves that I use Dawn dish soap to wash my truck. I mean, he thinks that is like revolutionary, but I am. Grease off ducks. Why can't it get dirt off of trucks, right? Dude, that, there you go. There, there's an ad for you. But in all seriousness, you know, like Brandon, he appreciates I'm going to be detailing the truck today. I've got some plans for it this year. But I don't want to say I moved on, but Brandon, I'm a lot like, think about this. You love shoes, right? Yeah. I know we're talking modified rides. Shoes, but... We're going to go ahead and get clarify that. We're talking about Nike tennis shoes. I'm not a. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Nike tennis shoes. So he loves Nike tennis shoes. But if you think about, it, sometimes you'll buy a pair of shoes and you go, you know what? I want to. I'm going to save them for a rainy day. I'm going to save them for ten years or whatever. And like this year, the the Agassiz are apparently going to come back. The hot lavas. I kind of like the fact that I can leave my truck. Maybe like maybe I'll put it up. I'm taking it to four shows this year. I've already taken it to one. I've got three more left in the next three months. Then it's going to get put up for a while. 
and people go, well, how long? It might be like a pair of Brandon Burrell shoes, right, uh, that have never been worn. In 10 years, it might Got come back out. But when it comes back out, people are going to go, man, this thing looks clean, you know? And that's what I appreciate. I don't know what it is about my mind. I can sit on something for 10 years and go, you know what? I'm going to bring it back out that, now. So we'll have a seat. It's almost like a Shannon Bullis thing. Like anybody new yeah. in the scene probably have no clue who Shannon is, but us OGs, like his truck set the bar for so many things. And, and, you know, he just don't bring it out because he showed it a million times. Same thing with, I, I bet Eddie, I bet after the next year or so Eddie's truck will sit because he's like, I've set this thing up and cleaned it 40, 40,000 times in a year. It's time to yep. let it sit. So yeah, and I've transitioned to if, if you know Brandon may be able to show a photo, but like I love Lincolns, and after my dad passed away, I had a Lincoln, and then I had an opportunity to get a blue sixty four, which is kind of a dream of mine, and it it worked out. It, it wasn't planned, but you know then you know I waited, I got it back. It's got the Colorado custom wheels, so like a lot of my energy has went to this dare I say patina outside. Everything else has been restored except for the interior that's on the list. So. You know, it's not like, you know, Brandon, you and I, we've been around a long time. You'll have you'll have guys and ladies, and this is no slight against anyone. You'll have folks that'll do it, and then they're gone, and you don't see them, and then maybe you see them 20 years later. I've been in this scene consecutively since 96 and reading mags since 93. I don't foresee myself going anywhere, but it's just like you with this new modified rides venture. You're wanting to try something a little bit different. It's not that you're not going to go to shows or, you know. But think about how you said this at the beginning. You're in the Carolinas. I'm in Florida. We can contribute to the scene in ways now that we never thought we could 30 years ago. You know, we could do a video sure. episode. We can highlight people. You've been highlighting people for a long time with with photos and features. That's where my passion is now. You know, I'd rather go to a show and maybe do an interview with someone real quick or feature their truck in a quick social post versus me going and like winning a trophy. You know what I'm saying? That's just where my mind is at the same thing. Like, I, I mean, yeah, there's certain shows that you're like, well, that that's a cool trophy or that's a cool title. Like one of the ones I've gotten a couple of times is a, yeah. you know, a most attention to detail. Like I've got yep. a couple of those to me, an attention to detail trophy means way more to me than oh, I got a first place civic trophy, you know, like back right. in the day, wild, but, wild, but you it's know, like yeah. in, in Oh four, I sold the show car. I had to focus on the magazine stuff. Sure. Uh, that's about the time I started shooting for, for print magazines in 01, you know, I'd done it for a couple of years. So it's like, usually you know, or at that point, you know, it, usually at the first part of the day, I'm out cleaning the vehicle or whatever. Well, now I'm out shooting features at sunrise. Like I didn't have time to clean my vehicle. And it's like, you know, I wanted to push the brand of Braille images. I wanted to get as many features shot as I could. You know, this was before video. This was really, you know, before social media, like you couldn't, I was having a burn, pictures on a CD to mail to the editors with printed contact sheets. Like now I have guys just upload me, you know, straight to our Google drive. We don't mess with it, but same thing. I, I didn't have a vehicle, a show vehicle from 04 to 14. Now every vehicle I had was modified in some degree, which goes back to the whole moderate modified rods thing. You know, windows were tinted. It was lowered. It had wheels, you know, it had something, it had a sub box, something in every vehicle I owned, whether it was a, I think the only one I didn't modify was my, my 82 Subaru I had. Now that was, uh, about once a week, I'd check the gas and fill the oil. You know, it was one of those that it was just a $400 throwaway car, but it's probably about the only one I've not modified, but same thing. I, I quit worrying about going and, and showing and, and having a clean vehicle and all that. So I could focus on something else. So, yeah. And a lot of times we make those, um, you know, in life, like, you know, you'll, ourselves or other folks like, they'll, you know, you'll have a kid and you'll kind of take a break or you'll say, Hey, my, you know, my kid's 18. So, you know, and we go through those, I don't know if the words ebb and flow, but you know, yeah. those ups and downs of things. And to your point, you know, sometimes you put the pedal to the metal and you go, Hey, I'm going to maybe sell some stuff. I'm going to focus on this brand. And I know you're not going to focus on this a lot on your podcast. I'm guessing, you know, you're an editor of a magazine now. And I look up to that because I go, you know, you put the work in, you know, and that's why I think a lot of people, when they get to their forties, you know, they figured out a lot of things in Still, life and they go, fifties, right, exactly. I was going to say, you're probably in your thirties, but you know, <laughs> I'm in my forties. I'll speak for myself, but you know, we, we, you know, we put the work in, we made the mistakes, we figured stuff out. And then, you know, you see a lot of people that are just getting their footing at their 40, you know, in their forties and that's fine. But I think like, to your point, 
you know what you're doing is you know you're 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 expanding the uh, Brandon Burrell uh, universe. And that's and that's the thing. Like I said, I took that ten years off. You know, then in you know 2013, me and my my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, we went to SEMA and I saw all the big crazy big lifted trucks, and it's like. You know, I was shooting for a lot for trucking magazine at the times. Like I can do yep. some tech articles on the lift kit and the bumpers and this and that. Jokingly decided to do a SEMA build. Did one for 14, sold it at SEMA, did one for 15, did another one for 16, did a buddies for 17. Like it just every year I'm like, well, this is the last year I'll do it. And it's I think I enjoy the the process of it, which I guess also goes back to the name of the podcast, like the modified rides. I enjoy the process of modifying it. Once the vehicle's done a hundred percent, I'm bored. Like I'm yeah. on to the next one. Let's, let's see what we can do. I made a comment to Tony at slam 64s at slammed underscore 64s. I've been following him before most people, cause he was in the Lincolns and he kind of still is, but as you know, he builds a lot of cool stuff and he had sold the Lincoln. And I commented one time and I said, you know, Tony, I really see in you that you enjoy the process i think is the word i used yeah. or you know the build aspect of it more than now you're like well now i got a car and then you know a lot of us are you know if you're a squirrel you're antsy you're like well what am i doing now you know so that is what i see in you that you know you enjoy that process you know you you've got uh, when when cranberry was going to go to sema and we had talked early on in the project you said hey i'm going to go full in you you remind me of a project manager because you're like, yo, Jay, I got to take my lights to this guy. I got to do this, 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 you know, and that's, oh, by the way, in between at the time, your other career, your day job that you had. So if you look at like SEMA, even if you're just an enthusiast or a modified ride guy or lady, you are literally a project manager if you're doing something for SEMA, in my opinion. Well, that was, that was one of those ones that, you know, I dive into it and I'm, I over research everything, you know, well, who's the sure. best for this? Who's the best for that? You know, that truck really wasn't supposed to be that much. It was supposed to be a, you know, a static drop, you know, static drop sway bars, maybe a little performance, you know, just something clean. Jake released the pictures of the, of the gray Ram that was bagged. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to go a different route with that. And then I decided oh, yeah. to go over the top with it. But once it was done, you know, uh, then, then COVID hit. So it kind of didn't do anything for a year or so. You know, then I took it back to SEMA for the second time, and it was like, okay, I'm bored with it. I want something else. Well, yeah, and and I've said this before to you, but I want to thank you because one of the bucket list things, as basic as it may sound, is I've always wanted to do uh, the SEMA ride out. And that year, you go, yo, Jay, I got a spot if you want it. And it was Adam and your awesome wife and you. And, it, you know, it was neat to be able to experience that in Cranberry, of course. And then I think it was like maybe that next year you sold it because that was like the second or third year. That was the but, second year I had it at SEMA and I sold it in December. Yeah, there you go. So, so, so the, you know, yeah, now, so, so it, it's like it's awesome. Now I have the static drop truck that Cranberry is originally supposed to be. Yep. And this truck checks all the boxes for me. But it's like once it's done, am I going to be bored? Well, it's like. Well, now I'm building the, the wife of SEMA project yep. and, you know, th then I've got my, my daily, that's the under budget Maverick. We're trying to do something cheap because you can't go out and buy, you know, even used vehicles are, are 30 grand now. Oh yeah. Well, and, and my buddy Vic will always say this. I say a similar statement, but I think something that you've done and what I would encourage other people to do, you know, that are listening to this modified rides podcast or that are watching it is, you know, build the relationship with the people in the industry, you know, sure. companies that, that you may love. Like I, I truly love Colorado custom wheels and they've changed ownership. And luckily Michael and his wife and the whole team there, they're great people. Right. And they go, yo, Jay, like you're constantly, I don't get anything for free from them. You know, other people might get free stuff, but I, I consider myself an ambassador because I love the product, right? No different from you getting Adam's polish. You love that stuff. And you go, Hey, I use it. I'm just showing people how great it is. And, and sure, they might give you a bottle here or whatever. But at the end of the day, like I think when you build those relationships within the industry, you probably would have never guessed in 99 or before that you would be building SEMA rides or having no. TIS wheels come and shake your hand and go, yo, Brandon, how you, what can we do for you? And you're like, you know, congratulations, you made it to that level. But again, it did not happen overnight. And I think that's what people have to understand. You have to work hard to do it. Now, some young kids, you know, they'll get a TikTok and they'll blow up. Yeah, there's one in a millions out there. Right. I mean, there are some people, but for the most part, your average person, like I'll speak for myself, myself, we have to put the work in. It doesn't happen overnight. Well, I get, you know, 
comments a lot of time, well, your, your social media looks like a commercial, this and that. And it's like, yeah, because I work with all these companies. But then sure. when, I, when I go to build something, they're like, hey, we love what you do. How can we be involved? I, I think maybe the, the build process sponsorship stuff might be something I need to touch on in a later podcast. Sure. But the, the years of work, I mean, this is my 30th year going to shows. I started going to shows in, in 94. I started Amazing. shooting for the magazines in, in 2001, you know, I started for with street source or street scene, I guess, back then. Yeah. You know, SSM started shooting for them online before the magazine stuff, but where I have a lot of like local people we used to go to shows with all the time, got out of it. They got kids. They got a job that was too demanding. You know, they moved yeah. or whatever. I never stepped away from it. Yep. I've been two to four weekends a month, every month during the summer at shows for 30 years now. Yeah. And That's you love it. Thing. Yeah. So when people's like, well, how did, how did you get the sponsor on this? Or how did you get to do a SEMA business? Like, cause I've got 30 years of doing this every day. It's not, yeah, and they want to work life. with me. Yeah. And, and here's a mistake that I'll just hit upon real quick is I've helped people with proposals, right? You, you, you know, you've I'm sure done a lot of your own. And what I see from people, sometimes they'll, they'll get a partnership and they'll, you know, then they don't really post much about it. It's like SEMA is over and it's like, whatever. And I'm like, look, yeah, you don't have to maybe depending on what your agreement is with said company. But like even me, like Bada Bing was finished, you know, 12 years ago. And it's like, okay, I don't have to continue. You know, I, I think some yeah, people go, well, it's a little obsessive. On it. But, but yeah, but, but I'm like, you know, some of the people that made a lifetime commitment, like Jimmy Graham to build my truck and help me. I feel like, Hey, if I can just thank them, you know, year after year and say, man, you know, Jimmy's running customs built this, you know, that's a cool thing to me. And I think like some people have to understand to your point, uh, I, I did an Optima sponsorship years ago and like, bro, I had, I had to sign something that was like, you're going to do this and this and this. And yep. I was like, man, all this for a $200 battery, you know, sometimes you folks out there that want the sponsorships have to understand that it's a lot harder. Sometimes it's a lot more than it's worth. You know what I mean? But with someone like Brandon that's been doing it for so long, it, it's a natural thing. You know, you'll have the companies come up and go, hey, you know, Joe Schmo, what are you working on, man? And you go this, or like, dude, we want to be a part of it. Like, that's when you know, I, in my opinion, in the industry, that you've really kind of hit that notch, that but mark. The way that works is if, you know, I got drop stars on the truck. If they call me up or shoot me a message and go, hey, we, we got an event down in Atlanta. Can you be in Atlanta this weekend? Guess what? I'm going to Atlanta this weekend. Yes. That's how that works. Yep. Because, oh, yeah. No, I'm not going to, you know, burn that bridge and say, hey, sorry, I can't do it. But I've worked a lot with all these companies that even some of my daily driver stuff, I'm like, hey, I bought this. And they'll reach out and go, hey, you know, I know you're not doing nothing with it, but can can we send you some XYZ parts to go on it? Like, or you know, let's, let's be involved with this one because we love what you do so much, but that don't happen overnight. That takes right. years and decades of, of doing it. So that's kind of some of the direction I want to go with this podcast though, is like how, how this industry works. How is my connection with some of these companies? How does that work? Cause you know, you have the, like, you know, kids in the neighborhood will come up and be like, Hey, I got, I've messaged this company and they gave me a 10% off. So they're sponsoring me. I'm like, okay, they, you got a discount code there. There's different, yep. but you promote them. Then your next purchase, they might be, might like, be hey, 20 more. Yeah. Yep. 15 let, percent exactly. More. But I think a lot of the, a lot of the people that aren't as deep in the industry as we are, see it as, you know, well, there's no work put in. They don't see the, the hours and hours of, like you said, the, the, to put a SEMA vehicle together. I oh, yeah. had 40 hours a week for three months on top of my 60 plus hour a week job yep. in an emails and, and finding parts and part numbers and what works with this and what company can do this and what can we get done in this time frame And it's just, it's stressing if something's going to get done and things like that. And yeah, I, I, I totally agree. And, you know, kudos to the people that are reaching out and, and, you know, even getting a 10% or whatever, right. Something to piggyback off of that is just know that, these companies, it's good for them because it costs money for a company to go to a magazine or, you know, on social media to advertise. But you have to understand as well, just doing one post for a company, you know, most folks don't realize like they're like, well, you know, I got, I got 10,000 followers. Well, I touched upon recently in the OLP episode with Sean from the BMX builds that, you know, the algorithm is a hard thing to beat. You know, Facebook wants you to advertise with them. They're not going to let you just do one post and be like, oh, yeah, this is, we love your lights. We're going to let a million people see it. 
you know, there's governors, if you will, on all of that yeah. stuff to go, yeah, you'll have one that'll pop off here and there. Maybe if you're a media company, like some of our favorite truck magazines, maybe one will pop off. I totally get it. But, you know, just know you have to, if you want a sponsorship, in my opinion, you have to become, you, you have, in your mind, you have to ask yourself, do I want to be a brand ambassador for not a Brandon, not a Brandon Burrell, but a brand ambassador. Do you want to be one of those for that company? And that's what I feel like for Colorado Custom. I, I've hit them up before to say, hey, can we do a partnership on something? And they go, hey, what do you need? And I go, man, I feel really good when Michael asks that. I say a million bucks. I mean, he never sends it. But you Mate, know what I mean. Guess what? Like, hey, you never know. Yeah, and, and it's, it, it's got to make you feel good knowing, man, we've been doing this for 25, 30 years. Like, wow, like... You know, you told me this, uh, remember at SEMA when you went up to, um, I don't know if it was K Dave Kindig yeah. or if it was Ralph, Dave. RMD, but he, he goes, hey, you know, he saw your jacket and he goes, hey, Brandon, how you doing, man? And you're going, you know, I, I'm the new editor, but like you, you realize all the work that you put in. You're like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, people know who I am. That's freaking I didn't awesome. just walk into that job. It ain't like I saw it on Indeed and said, hey, this is what <laughs> I want to do. It was like. Hey, you've done this for, you know, 20 plus years. You know, you understand how the process works. Do do you want, do you want to do this? And I said, absolutely. Sure. So mm -hmm. it, it just, I would like to get, you know, future episodes and stuff. And I, my post the other day, I said something about issues. I've, I'm so used to saying issues, not episodes. <laughs> now, now you watch, I'm going to write my next editorial and I'm talking about in this episode, and I'm going to have to go <laughs> back and change it to issue. But, uh, you know, I, I really want to, see the the younger generation understand how this world works i mean granted we're gonna have us old folks on here listening you know taking our ibuprofen before we sit down to to listen to it but uh maybe sit on a heating pad or something but uh you know i want the uh i want the kids to to realize that it's not all about the you know i'm gonna post this TikTok and i'm gonna get this like you have to put the work in you have to go you know you have to go to more than one show a year two shows a year you have to like we're traveling to LSC, that's a 16 hour drive for us, but guess what? We're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you definitely do. And that's the cool thing. Everything has kind of come full circle. One comment that I'll make and, and that I wanted to make sure, like I heard this, I've heard this twice now and literally this week, just this week. And it's funny because like I talked about the video game, I guess they call it the video game collapse of the early eighties. I heard two people and this is no slight against them. If they happen to hear this, I'm not being mean at all. But I've heard two people literally say, yeah, after the 90s, the scene, the, the truck scene kind of fell off. No, and you I was stopped like, going in the, after the 90s. Right. And, and I, I, I had that urge to go, you know what? I want to comment. But I was like, mm, they're not going to read it. And is it, it's not going to change their mind. Like, maybe I'll talk about it on a podcast. And here we are. But here's the thing. Mini trucking or the truck scene in general. I guess depending on who you are, I mean, if you didn't go to shows, maybe in your mind, like I, I thought for a second, brain, I was like, okay, well, mini trucking went to 2014. You know, I know trucking kind of went away. I get that. But we, nothing has, I don't think anything ever even dipped off. Well, now, they, they probably see the magazine aspect of it and go, hey, they're not around. It's like, no, the, the scene didn't change. The, the way people consume content changed i look at yes. it like this and i ask people this question all the time when's the last time you carried a magazine into the bathroom with you right you you take your phone so yeah. that's why you know even with the the yeah, you with the print side of stuff you still have to have the the digital you still have to have the videos you still have to have the the social stuff but back you know when i started doing this in in 01 for for magazines there was none of that there was no yeah. You know, there people change the way they consume content, just like this. Yeah, podcast. it was straight source. You know, yep. 15, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have thought, hey, there's going to be a podcast. I'm going to listen to people from all over the country while I'm washing my car, or while I'm walking my dog. It's, you know, yep. or I'm driving somewhere. It's, it was a radio. I, I couldn't tell you yeah. how time I put FM radio on in my, in any of my vehicles. Right. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. And like I said, it's no slight against those folks because look, everybody has an opinion. Like somebody could be like, yeah, the scene kind of fell off. And if that's what they think, you know, the old saying of the customer's always right. If you think the scene fell off, then I may or may not be able to change your mind. You're free to think whatever you want. But I would argue if I was a lawyer, I would say, well, give me some facts on when you think it fell off. Now, yeah, you may have gotten out of it and you didn't see any shows because you live in so-and-so Wyoming or wherever. 
But at the same time, like Brandon and I could argue for 30 straight years, I went to a show every year and nothing has fallen off. Now, granted, I think you said this earlier, some guys and ladies got out of it. I totally get it. Life gets in the way. Life gets in the way. That's a great statement. And then you come back and that is fine. You know, nobody's going to go, man, you know, you're you're not cool because you got out of the scene for four years because you had a kid. Family is always first. But when you get back in it, don't be like, yeah, you know, I kind of got out of it because, you know, the scene kind of fell off. Like that's something in your mind that is made up to give yourself, I don't want to say excuse, but to give yourself an excuse to kind of go why you got out of it. That's fine. But don't pigeonhole and say the scene fell off. So you got out of it because I I could, if I was a lawyer, Brandon, I could argue that one all day. Well, you know, I think the people like that, like they might've had kids and they got into baseball or, you know, sure. they got into going to the lake with their kids or, you know, whatever. And it, it, it's changed. Yeah. That's the thing about me. When I started doing this, I don't golf. I don't ride dirt bikes. I don't hunt. Right. I don't fish. I don't go to the lake. My life completely revolves around modified vehicles, and it has since I was in high school. So, yep. to me, it never fell off. Yeah, has it exactly. changed? Absolutely. Has shows evolved? Absolutely. Has the build style and quality changed? Absolutely. Just like your your truck with the you know the frame. Like you go back forty years ago, no one would have done that. Now, now you can get online and, and buy a chassis for your truck that's already powder coated. Ship to your house. Yeah. yeah, like there's there's so many out there. And and people say, well, oh, the mini truck scene, you know, is is smaller than it used to be. All right. Well, if you can go out right now, find 10 different websites to buy a chassis for a C10 or an F100 or an OBS, fully built, bag, static, whatever you want, until you can until you can buy a Nissan hard body frame or, you know, buy a, you know, AMD or somebody have a a fender for Tacoma, it's going to be different because those companies chase after the, after the demands. Uh, I had a conversation the other day and they were talking with Belltech, you know, Belltech's on my Sierra, Belltech's going on the Maverick, you know, we're both of them's lowered. We're doing Belltech poster right here. Yeah. We're doing both of them, uh, or doing lifted on the, the Tahoe with Belltech. So if I asked you right now, what would you think Belltech's most sold lowering kit or most sold suspension kit is? What would you say it is? It's probably, well, being part of the industry to a certain extent, I would say probably lifted kits. Nissan Hardbody. Wow, there you go. That's their most sold kit. I, I was I was expecting like OBS or, you know, square body C10 or something, something that there's so many out there. But they said the Nissan Hardbody was their most sold kit. Blows yep. my mind. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think my last thought on it is just that you think about how things have evolved so much over the course of time. And it's okay that people get out of it. It's okay that, you know, you might be in your forties now and your kids are grown and you go, you know what, I'm going to buy a truck and relive my memories. I mean, a lot of us are doing it with BMX bikes. Like that's the great thing about if if you're listening or watching this in the U S and I'm sure a lot of other countries, like you have the Liberty to go, I'm going to go buy a truck. I'm going to relive my memories. I'm going to do whatever makes you happy. But certainly, like I said earlier, I would I would argue to people that, you know, don't down someone just because they're into something. I had a com- that conversation with my buddy Paul last night, and we talked a little bit about someone comes on my page the other day, and they're like, you people need to grow up. You're into these stupid trucks and grow up, right? And granted, you and I both know, again, I'm not going to get flapped up. It's a, it's a troll. I get it. Yeah. But I could argue and say, well... You could say that statement about, okay, a guy that's in the fishing. Well, you fished with your dad as a kid. You need to grow up. Or Why hunting. are you still sitting on the lake corner yeah, every day? You, you could argue anything. You know, a, a guy that is just into bonds and, and making money and buying stock could be like, well, you know, you're, it's, you're dumb for spending $2 million on a Ferrari. Look, people are going to do what they want to do. And the people that are trolls or the people that want to go out there and go, well, you know, I, I had a guy um, last year at Mini Nats. So, uh, Tom Jenkins has the four, uh, the, 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 the topless Toyota, right? And Shannon uh, from Freaks is riding in it. And I did this little slow motion video of it cruising by, and I put like the, the Jazzy Jeff and, and Will Smith song, two miles an hour so yeah. everybody sees you, and it's yeah. just creeping by. And it got like th- tens of thousands of hits. The one thing that I hate about going viral is once that video kind of goes out of its normal stream, you're going to get every Tom, Dick, and Harry that comments on it. So th- this this was the comment from people. That's stupid. If that thing rolls, you're dead. 
Okay. You so did. I take my 65 Lincoln Continental convertible photo <laughs> and I go, here's a 65 Lincoln Continental convertible that you could say the same statement in. Like, like, why do you even waste your time to do that? But again, people want the engagement. And sure, you don't have to engage back. But again, I just think it is horrible to down someone else for something. As long as you're not hurting people yep. or you're doing things to create, you know, like, you know, I'm, not, I'm against racism, number one in my life. Yeah. As long as you're not doing anything that's hurting kids or against race, you know, it's not for racism or whatever. I go, dude, do what makes you happy. 100%. And in our world, it's modified vehicles. So all these modified rides. My man. So I guess one of my one of my in questions here, where do you see the modified rides scene industry, however you want to put that, where do you see that going in the near future? Not 10, 20 years from now, like within the next five years, where do you see the modified rides going? So I thought the conversation was going to go here. And I will say this. It goes back to my last statement. Okay. I understand a lot of us go online and we see the EV stuff and we go, it's not for me. I got to ride in the Tesla recently and I asked a million questions. Okay. I don't hate on the people that want to have an EV. The guy, Brett, which I hear you might see some more of a truck that he owns in the near future. Brett had an awesome EV that was bagged. Now the ironic thing was it caught fire, but it had nothing to do. I went to his house it had nothing to do with the Tesla side of it. It was the normal battery that was on a tender that just had an accident. Okay. It had nothing to do. And I know people aren't going to believe that, but that's the truth. It was an investigation, I think. But I do think, Brandon, like just like when the internal combustion engine came out, you probably had people, I know this is going to blow people's minds. You probably had people that sold horses and carriages that were like, this is going to decimate our industry. Yeah. And you go, and then, and then what did you have? You had people probably going, you know what? How are you going to drive across the country? Where are you going to, are you going to just take fuel, like fuel tanks in your car? Where are you going to fuel up? It's the same thing that people are saying now. Now, granted, I am not for EV or against it. I could care less. I think the EV gonna... world won't be where it needs to be. And this is my opinion. Yeah. Uh, which is the whole point of being on a sure. podcast like this. You can have yep. your opinion. Sure. Until you can pull into a quote unquote gas station, plug it in walk in, get a drink, a bag of chips, go to the bathroom, go out, unplug it and leave. Yep. That it's never going to be the fact that you've got to find a charger and sit for an hour to charge it. Like, I'm sorry if I'm driving, you know, like LST here in a a couple of weeks, if I'm driving 16 hours somewhere, I don't want to stop three times to sit for an hour and plug it in. Right now that's a 20 hour trip. Well, and I'll give you an example of the buddy Nick that I have. He's a drone pilot, and he helped me with the shoot recently. He drove his, and he goes, well, like, for instance, if I were to drive the Jacksonville, it's telling me I have to stop once. And I so so here's my first question. I go, well, how long are you going to have to stop for? He goes, like, 20 minutes. And I go, okay, so you're going to go in, use the bathroom, get a drink, whatever. And I thought to myself, okay, that's doable for me potentially, yeah. right? But also, a lot of people aren't. If you look into the hydrogen car, my dad used to talk about this 20 years ago. He said, eventually there'll be a hydrogen car. And it's the same thing they're saying now. Of course, you're going to have to put something into it. But they said what comes out of the tailpipe is literally water. It just drips water. So I think there's people that are way smarter than me that are going to figure this out. And I think you get to a point. Here's my only fear. Um, Do we get to a point where kids look at a car like Apple? There's no secret. They're going to launch a car at some point. It keeps getting pushed back. Do people look at a car like an iPhone? You know, when the iPhone first came out, this isn't an iPhone, this is a Pixel, but people would buy the different backs and stuff, right? Yeah. They would modify them. And now, you know, you buy an iPhone, you're like, dude, I ain't changing anything because my warranty's gone. So I wonder sometimes, do cars get so technology advanced that people are like, I don't want to change the wheels. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Luckily for us, we have a whole world of enthusiasts that are out there. And I think that's going to be what we're seeing now, Brandon, is a resurgence of the older cars. Well, like the the EV deal, yeah. you know, my buddy Adam just bagged uh, RJ from Eye Candy's Lucid Air. You know, okay. first one ever done. It's like, all right, so you're going to bag this Lucid Air. You're going to change very slightly the diameter of the tires. Like, is that going to affect all these sensors sure. and the regenerative braking? Like, there's probably going to be a point, like you said, that you're not going to be able to modify it because it's going to throw every sensor in the world off and it's not going to work right. But... Us gearheads will find a way around that. 
Yeah, yeah. And there's a, I forget the guy's channel. There's two guys that they sound Australian, but they live in Arizona. They just did. I watched a 40 minute review. I have no desire to know anything about the Cybertruck. No. But their channel was so entertaining. The way they do the reviews was mind blowing. And I thought they were going to give it a glowing review. Like, this is the greatest thing ever, like an iJustine, yeah. you know, type review. And they did, they did not do that. And it was really intriguing. I watched all 40 minutes and it was like, okay, the Cybertruck it probably is the same. You get in the hate, like just like when the DeLorean came out, like a but stainless steel we're car. We're talking about it. We're talking about it. Exactly. So you look at that and go, okay, well, I may hate it. I may think it's dumb, but Brandon, if somebody brings one to freaking SEMA this year and it's bodied, <laughs> you may see it on the cover of a magazine. You know, we've seen C10s on the cover of EV magazines, yep. right? So, you know, it, I think that's the cool thing, just to sum it up. You know, there, there's something out there for everybody. And although I'm not sold on the EV stuff, I'm curious to see if that's going to have any bearing on the younger kids now that might go, I don't want to have an engine. I don't want to modify something. I think that's insane, but that's just my opinion. Well, then you got people like my daughter that grew up around it and grew up going to shows that every year is like, I'm doing something for SEMA. Are you going to build me one? I'm like, are you paying for it? She right. goes, no, but I figured you could build one for me and just give it to me after SEMA. Oh, like, yeah. It, it doesn't work like that. So, <laughs> But, you know, you do have the ones that are that are into it. You know, the, like I said, the kids in the neighborhood, you know, my daughter, there is some into it. But then I've got other friends that have kids that are 18 years old, gearing to go to college, that do not ever want to have their license, want to go to college where there's a, a walking distance school. And it's like, I was sitting at the DMV on my 16th birthday, waiting on them to open. And these kids are like, I don't want to drive. I, so, and you're just going, dude, it's, it's weird that the Liberty that you have from being able to drive and do what you want is, is, is such a cool feeling. And as you touched upon with the modified ride aspect, to be able to go out there and add a system or paint it or find someone that's into the same stuff you are and like, Oh, let's lower our trucks. Let's figure out how to do it. It was just the ultimate feeling back in the day to be able to, I remember the first time I drove my truck after the guy cut the front springs, put blocks in the back. I don't even think I had spindles. And it was like I was driving, and the, and the truck just had this like janky kind of like, and it was like it, just an unbelievable feeling. I was like, man, I'm so low, and I'm looking. Are people looking at me? I remember, and, and, you know, that feeling, and it was like, it just was mind blowing. My CRX, we actually cut the springs in the car, never even took them out. Just cut off the wheel, counted down the coals, cut it all the way around. Well, we had nicked one of the rings below it on the spring, and about a year later, I was pulling in somewhere and heard this big bang, and that where we had nicked that spring broke. So we had to go back through and cut another, another <laughs> hole out of the other three springs. This desk would probably ride better down the road than that thing did, but it was the coolest thing. Yeah, ever. And you probably have those, you know, again, you know, I would see this guys in the, in the Isuzu's cruising around and they'd be bouncing like this. <laughs> and I'd look and I'd be like, man, that must be so cool. You know? And, and granted, if, if, if you lived in that era and you know, but I mean, we've moved on from that, but we have those fond memories of like, yeah, you know, we probably wouldn't do that now, but, well, it was now, awesome. My Sierra, I've got a you know a four six drop. It's still four wheel drive. Four wheel drive still works. It rides and drives just like it did stock. You know, I've had people ride with me, and they're like, "There's no way this thing's lowered." I'm like, "Yeah, we did a four six drop on it, and that's what is the technology's changed so much with these new vehicles yeah. that you know you're not cutting springs and and hoping for the best." And yeah, yeah, I want to just give a shout out to Bell Tech. Um, they re released my friend Tim Davis. You can't see it. My friend Tim Davis gifted me an original Phantom Dually um, that debuted at SEMA 93 from Bell Tech. And it was on April 94 truck and cover, one of my favorite trucks. It was a Phantom Dually extended cap, okay, orange. They recently re released this poster without some of the, mm -hmm. the branding for Air Jack on it because that's like an old, old school system. But they took that original photo, which was a guy named, I think, Rich or Rick Hen. Hedrick, it was it was not Rick Hendrick, but it's a very similar name. Shot the photo, and they re-released it for only ten bucks. And I, you know, Brandon, I had to go on Bell Tech the other day and buy yeah. a couple of those posters. But also, before you wrap it up, I wanted to say this at the beginning. I mentioned I was going to mention a fun fact. Okay, you guys are probably going to hate that I tell you this about myself. When I was younger, I worked. My first job was at McDonald's, and people used to say. And my friend Paul that was here last night, his sister asked me this one time. She goes, you sound like Kermit the Frog. And I go, really? <laughs> right? So at, at, at Bush Gar or at, at, at McDonald's, a couple people would say, man, you, you sound just like Kermit the Frog. Now, once I tell people that, they can't unhear it. So that's why people are going to get pissed. I'm, I'm, the, I'm but, hearing it now. 
a guy, you know, if I say Kermit the Frog here, <laughs> so this guy commented, so so people will say that to me on social media sometimes thinking that I'm going to get pissed off. And I go, hey, show me the money. I've always wanted to be a voice actor. And if someone needs a Kermit the Frog guy, I'll come read the script. You know what I'm saying? So that's the fun fact about ODP. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you will will be renamed in, in, in my phone after this. I'm just going to save you as Kermit. So now you're ODB in my phone. You will be saved as Kermit after this. Yeah, you have to update my photo too, though, Brandon. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on. Um, and I know we kind of had somewhat of an outline of what we was going to do. Sure. And, you know, of course, the train always goes off the track. So, which that's the whole the whole point of this, you know, everybody feeds off of people. That's what I want to do with, with my guests. You know, everybody's got a different story and, and view on the modified world. So appreciate you being my first guest on this. You know, it's good to have someone that understands how the podcast world works right off the bat. Um, so how, how do we find you? So people know how to find you after they listen to this or watch this. It's an honor, Brandon. Thank you. They can just search OLP. We have that as kind of like our subtitle, like Brandon said at the beginning, our lifestyle podcast, but you can search OLP. You'll see our famous graphic disorder artwork that has the lifted and lowered truck, kind of that river run atmosphere. That's what we've ran with now for the past several years. Um, find us through any podcast app. You can watch our videos as well on YouTube. And I just love that a lot of other people like Brandon are getting into this because there's so many, thank you. There's so many stories out there. You know, if you look at this, Brandon said it earlier, mini trucks, old school BMX, hip hop, 80s, 90s culture. We try to kind of touch upon a little bit, but at the end of the day, whether it's modified rides, which you're listening to now, or it's our lifestyle, you know, it really encompasses a lot of stuff. And if you think about, you know, I may not be the biggest Kanye West fan, but there was a a, a verse that he said, he goes, everything I, um, everything I'm not made me everything I am, right? Well, you could spin that a couple ways. And if you think about, the stuff that made us who we are, you know, the magazines, the video games, the BMX, the skateboard decks. At the end of the day, it culminates in the stuff that we love. Modified rides, Brandon. You know what yep. I'm saying? I right, appreciate you having in or, or having a conversation with me today. Uh, look forward to running to, into you here in a couple of weeks in Texas at LST. I'm hoping to have all this out by then so people can listen to it in route. So I'm sure you're are you are you dropping an issue or, or see there I go with the issue again episode early? For yeah, we're gonna try to do a Lone Star episode right before that so people can check out OLP and we'll hopefully hear from Lonnie and Radar, two of our good um, you know colleagues in the scene, great people that are always sending a great message. And if you're in the Conroe or Greater Texas area, come out to Lone Star Throwdown 2024. I think it's twenty bucks for three days, and I've argued this is the best value in the scene. So one of the top shows in the industry, I think, because of where it's located in Texas, it's basically what people call it, SEMA of Texas. Yes, caliber is ridiculous at this show. Yeah. So there'll be a couple cars there, mostly trucks, and there's a little bit for everyone. Yes, sir. Thanks, Brandon. No problem. Uh, we'll see you next time.